Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Remake playthrough. We are running around Wall Market doing side quests. It's like, it's like Yakuza, guys. Have you heard that comparison before? It's kind of like that. But anyway, there's only... <laughs> Persona 5 invented the Yakuza. Persona 5 invented Shinjuku, yes. <laughs> Man, I can't believe Japan is such a Persona 5 ripoff. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> we recorded this part a month after those memes were already dead, so just goes to show what our priorities are here. No, per people comparing stuff to Persona 5 is a tale as old as time. It's been like three years. <laughs> Man, and Persona 3 is such a poor man's Persona 5. I, don't know, like. I know. Persona 4 <laughs> is such a Persona 5 ripoff. I mean, you, you guys didn't see it in the name. 3 is less than 5. Okay. Idiots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like, anyway, we're, we're helping my man over here get um, a little secret something from the vending machine over at the hotel down the road. I didn't really get this mission in the original game. It's like, you want me to head to the inn and check out their vending machine? It's like, I wasn't clear on why he just couldn't do that himself. I guess because he runs this shop and they're like competitors. Are we getting this guy? Oh, wait, no, sauce. Okay. The sauce. The sauce. I don't get it. What is the sauce? This is a joke that has flown over my head and I feel really stupid. It's Michael's secret stuff. There's a. There's a. <laughs> A lot of inappropriate things you can associate sauce with. Yeah, I, I think I think the joke is just you're, you're supposed to use your imagination to imagine the worst possible. Oh yeah, I know. When you go into the inventory, there's no actual image for the sauce. It's just a description and shining lights, and there's nothing there. <laughs> I mean, sauce is also kind of a gross word too. Putting aside the fact that you get it in the wall market, you're getting it from a vending machine. How bad could it Should, be? Not just a vending machine, but a vending machine in the sleazy, crappy inn. A secret button on the vending machine in the sleazy, crappy secret inn. Secret button. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things it could be. What if it's, like, literally just sauce, though? Why would you want to buy, like... Sp yeah, like, what, what, what if we're overthinking this and it's literally just a fucking eight-ounce can of Prego? <laughs> why would you want vending machine spaghetti sauce, though? Because, like, that if you leave it out too I mean, long, it gets gross. The same reason why folks will get... The same reason why folks would buy cigarettes from the old-school cigarette okay, dispenser. Okay, vending machines in Japan in particular are, like, space-age technology. You can there, get anything from like those things. Does this look like space-age technology to you? I, I, lo I love how during the side quest, Cloud spends half the time just fondling these balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so every, like... Pretty much every side quest in Wall Market gives you some sort of benefit for having a specific materia at a certain level. You can still complete them, even if you haven't leveled them up. But, like, for this one, you'll have to try fewer times in order to get the, um, in order to get the sauce out. The sauce. Um, the other items are completely useless, as far as I know. <laughs> They're just things you hand over, yeah. And, um, so, like, but, like... The different elemental attack materials play into what kind of advice you can give when you're helping at the restaurant. The Korean barbecue place, yes. Your your status effect recovery materia, which you probably haven't leveled up at all by this point because it's not super de duper useful. Oh my god, the fucking vending machine just read at you out. <laughs> Sauce obtained. Sauce obtained. Hole in one, hole in one. Funland has a hole in one. <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, space age technology, Japanese vending machines, you can get all sorts of stuff from vending machines in Japan. Like, there are entire restaurants with, like, no humans visible at all working in them that are open 24-7, where you can just buy cooked meals out of vending machines. And we would never be able to do that in America because someone would come around and vandalize the whole thing. Every two days. <laughs> I'm sure people vandalize them in Japan, too. Uh, not as much, though. But, uh, yeah, we already know. I don't live there, so I don't know. <laughs> we, are, we, already, we already know that we wouldn't be able to handle that because, like, I think they did some, like, some university did a study, like, even, like, 10 years ago where there was a hitchhiking robot and they wanted to see where it would end up, like, less than a day later. It was, like, completely dismantled and thrown into the Oh, yeah, ditch. no, people shoot down <laughs> the Amazon drones. Um, I remember hearing that. Boston Dynamics was trying to make their robots cuter because then people would be less likely to break them. 
And yeah, it didn't help. Yeah, of course so, it didn't help. There, are, nobody really liked the Terminator design for the drone. <laughs> so yeah, all of those, all of those sci-fi movies where the robots like uh, exist overthrow <laughs> and uh, destroy their uh, oppressive human overlords. That that. That happens because we're assholes and deserve it. Yeah, the opening scene of Terminator 1984 is literally just last year's live action footage. <laughs> so, isn't the Terminator supposed to have already happened by now? Isn't Skynet's Judgment Day was in 1997? Real talk, yes. though, people can be assholes about things they're opposed to, and like, I feel like the robot thing is part of that. Because, like, people think that the idea of delivery drones and robots is creepy, or they have some chip on their shoulder about how automation is going to destroy everything. Um, it, it's not. If, if people stop getting paid, they stop buying things. So that's never going to happen. I'm sorry. If, but If anything, automation would help because that means we all have more leisure time to actually do stuff we want to do. The upshot is when you release a robot of any kind into the wild, wild be it a drone or whatever, uh, uh, people are going to, like... They're going to think it's within their moral rights or something to break it. I don't moral even rights. think it's that. I think it's just a bunch of assholes who see something expensive and. Wild. I'm shooting down this robot for ethical reasons. Yeah, I think it's just a bunch of people who are shooting it down just to be dicks. You know, well, I don't yeah, think basically. there's any moral I mean, justification you, needed. You you say that, but people can be dicks and think they have moral moral justification for it. It's not a mutually exclusive thing. They view themselves as a hero by shooting down this. Unidentified flying object, yeah, despite not I knowing what the I'm the is. hero Gotham deserves to stand Amazon. Take that. <laughs> and Jeff then, of Bezos. course, there are the people who are just dicks and would say that they have that moral justification because they heard that guy two houses down saying it and decided it was a convenient excuse. Yeah, but, but um, people will believe anything if it allows them to feel like they're okay doing whatever, you know? Yeah, basically. They'll make any excuse they can. The point is. We need, like, some kind of heavy legal protection for robots before they can go out in public. Because, yeah, that's... I mean, we needed those for bus drivers, for fuck's sake. For public transit. Otherwise, people would be dicks to them. I mean, when you consider what humans will do to other humans that don't look like them, the fact that they will deface and try to destroy robots doesn't really seem like that much of a stretch. I mean... That's a known thing. I mean, oh, they, they, magic green materia. <laughs> What's the right answer? I don't understand why the material. What's the relevancy between the, the grade of the materia and man, the answer you give? Cloud, you're really like putting a lot of pressure. You into love that, them balls. Into that yeah, like, you're really like Cloud. You got to stop polishing those balls. You decided not to join Avalanche. <laughs> no way. Come back. <laughs> I, the idea is that you have uh, greater knowledge of a particular element, so you have a better. A chance of getting it right if you decide to evaluate equipment tied Let's to Let's see what that. the green material says. Shakes it ass again later. I'm True. sorry, as the green material said. <laughs> May I have something to eat? No. May I have something to eat? No. <laughs> Will you stop saying no? Try asking again. <laughs> <laughs> that looks fucking delicious. You can tell they're I wouldn't be surprised if... I wouldn't be surprised if it was just stuff taken from 15. Yeah, I was about to say. No, I was going to say, it looks a little le- it looks a little more low quality than 15. Well, it's only on screen for like two seconds. So. Yeah, it's being yeah, shown yeah. from a distance, so they don't need to... Like, when they show you food in Final Fantasy 15, the camera's right up to it. They have to give you that restaurant commercial quality shot of the food. You gotta have so lighting. many polygons on that fruit that it slows the Wii U down. Absolutely the- realistic fry jiggle physics. Uh, I need to have. I want a mod for 15 on PC where you play as the Iron <laughs> Chef guy. Uh, that that is the most relatable I've ever been with Johnny so far. Drugs. I need all the drugs right now. <laughs> Ryan, you can create characters in the in the in the Windows version and just substitute them out for Noctis. So create the Iron Chef guy. Yeah, I I Iron Chef. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't added that to the console version yet. It's annoying. Okay, okay but so we're not we're not uh, thinking like broad enough. We could have Emerald. In Final Fantasy 15, under Emerald. That no, if, it, if it's Final Fantasy, it has to be Iron Chef guy. Because if I don't dramatic, Look, don't it over you the top think the is. idea of Rachel Ray beating up Behemoths is like really funny, though? It's funny because Tifa's voice actress in Avent Children of Beyond was Rachel Lake Cook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean, we already did the obvious one where we made them a Sentai Rangers. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Okay, so this is interesting. I didn't do the. Is this the this is the Chocobo Chocobo Sam. Sam quest line? Yes. Okay, I didn't do this set of quest lines. It's kind of so I'm sort of seeing this for the first time. But I, I see that they they uh, they compromised a few quest lines from the original game because in the 
Uh, Johnny wasn't the one that had the stomach cramps in the original game. It was just some lady you found in the bar. Oh, the stomach cramps guy is a guy in the bathroom yeah. of a restaurant. You, you, yeah, he's you, still here. You still need to find he's him. He's still here? Yeah. Okay, but it, but you're but you're still getting medicine for Johnny because he has stomach cramps, which was also well, a no, thing you're, that you're the getting, No, he, the, this guy here is going to be treating Johnny, but you have to run a delivery for this guy because he can't leave to go to the delivery himself. Oh, oh, so, okay, so the person with the stomach cramps in the original game is still Okay, so here, here. Yeah. here's how this quest works. The higher your status effect recovery material, your cleansing material is, the more extra items you'll be given to deliver. And you have to find NPCs around the wall market that are um, ailing from something, and you have to give them the appropriate medicine. Here, since I'm only level 2 on cleansing, I only have two, um, two medicines. I have the deodorizing and for some reason they gave the, the, the um, digestive such a ridiculously com complicated name that I actually didn't know it was the digestive. An alleviating agent. What the hell does that mean? I'm not a fucking doctor. I just like the idea that in the Final Fantasy universe, if you have heart uh, burn, you can just go to a white mage and they'll cast cure on you and it'll be better. Anyway, the anti-emetic, whatever that is, is, uh, is the thing that you give to the guy in the bathroom at the restaurant. And it's the same restaurant the dress guy is at. It's the same bathroom in the same location, so if you know the original game, you pretty much know where to go. The other, the other, the other medicine is the difficult one. You have to find the person who's ailing from something that's making him smell something terrible, even though that something terrible isn't there. So the deodorizing tablets will help with that. Antiemetic drugs are used for nausea and vomiting. Oh, see, they are. It is. It's like the proper word. The people at Square know how to Google. Man, what smart people. Yeah, okay. Well, in any nice. case, <laughs> they could have at least put that in the description, but they didn't. They they just called it an alleviating agent. Listen, an alleviating I know agent? Advil cures headaches, but the moment you start calling it by its actual name, you, mean ibuprofen? you throw me for a loop. No, oh, no. no uh, that's, not, that's not true, Ted. I don't know ibuprofen. I know Advil. A Advil is ibuprofen. No, you're wrong. Advil is Advil. Oh, wait. Advil okay. is ibuprofen. I'm thinking of a lead. Tom, I, will, I will give you any amount of money if I'm wrong about this. I'm thinking of a leave. Yeah. A leave is the one that's not ibuprofen yeah. because that's the one that I've been using. Isn't a leave acetaminophen? Um, I'm not sure. Let me see. That might be Tylenol. No, actually. wait. No, that's an antihistamine. Tylenol. Consult your antihistamine. doctor today. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. This is exactly why they a say that shit in these commercials. A leave is naproxen sodium. Uh, Brain Scratch so, Cops is not responsible for any injuries that may become from you taking the wrong doses or the wrong type of medicine. Read the label, you dipshit. <laughs> Ted, you're saying that too, so you have to say it like at oh, least sorry. five times Brain faster to make sure. is not responsible for you taking the wrong medicine, you dipshit. <laughs> Advil is indeed ibuprofen, and I know this because whenever I search Advil or leave, the first thing that comes up in the top right corner is the Wikipedia article for the specific drug that it is. So, <laughs> there you go. So uh, now you know, and just out of curiosity, I want to see if I was right about Tylenol. The tyl tylenol, ty the tylenol just comes up with Tylenol's Wikipedia article. Thank you. It is um Tylenol does have a <laughs> um, a like a generic name, but I can't remember it for the life of me. It's something huh. a drug. Yeah, drug. <laughs> uh, the active ingredient in Tylenol is paracetamol. Also known as acetaminophen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, the, a acetamine, that's a, the one I was thinking. Acetamine. I had to highlight the link to get Wikipedia. To tell me what that. Uh, <laughs> why, was, that, that, uh, why was Tylenol the difficult one? Come on. Um, I'm, there is, you know what? I'm just going to call it Advil. I mean, there is some stuff with certain uh, medicine. Like, I believe my aunt is allergic to ibuprofen, so she can't take it and has to take Tylenol instead. Yeah, my mom can't take acetaminophen. She has to take So everything. this medicine delivery mission is kind of a headache because um, – <laughs> headache. Oh. Um, because, yeah, because, okay, unless you've gone around all of the alleys already and talked to all the NPCs and already had the foresight to commit to memory which NPCs looked sick and what they said they were sick with, you're going to be running around blind looking for the extra delivery items. The only obvious one is the anti-emetic, which is in the same place as in the original game. But the basically, don't level up your cleansing materia at all, and you'll save yourself a lot of pain here. Although you do get some extra items for doing ah, the extra. Pain. Uh -huh. Do you lose the materia in order to start the side quest? Because no. no, no, I think it just determines the amount of items you oh, get. Okay, 
So yeah. he just looks at your materia. He doesn't take it. All right. The, the, the joke is more due to the fact that you leveled it up. Cloud has more experience handling whatever the thing is. Confession time. Because I didn't know what a freaking anti for frenetic thing was i um i had to look this one up on a guide and i felt really embarrassed when i realized it was just the one that that goes to this guy why do you keep coming back i like how this guy's okay with cloud barging in on him in the bathroom listen man i i'm pretty sure everyone's had that period of sickness where you were just debilitized and you want nothing to do with anything and you don't go Fuck. Yeah. I, yep. I'm more cons- I'm more concerned about the guy who's outside, you know, holding the shits in because he really has to go, yeah. and he just watch watch he just watches the cloud walk in. Like, what the fuck, man? It's like, what the fuck? That was open the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I got a little confused here because I can see, you can see the question marks up there, but the record that's actually in this building is the Midgar Blues. If you walk yeah, cl- so. if you walk close enough to the back wall though, the uh the jukebox the outside triggers. starts to yeah. start I guess the, the the loading zones are too close so to I'm each like, other. So I'm like, whoa, wait, okay, okay, where's the music that I'm missing? Where's my Korean barbecue? Excuse me, sir, you can't be in here. This is the kitchen. <laughs> that is a sir? hella detailed kitchen, by the way. <laughs> Wait, waves it waves the orb of assessment around. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> orb of assessment. Just lifting up the fire material. Where's my burrito? <laughs> Here's my burrito. Oh, I hate I hate that because now because the only thing I can think of when I see that clip is a uh, Yoshi's Island. <laughs> the Yoshi's Island one, yeah. <laughs> Where's my burrito? <laughs> no, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel plan. <laughs> and then of course I remember that this jukebox is here because there's actually a side quest associated with it when you come back to Wall Market later. Um, yeah, I also got the NPC wrong. The one of the guys who gives you a song for the jukebox side quest is no, is a uh, uh, is a uh, Uematsu. Oh. not the guy we saw earlier. They look very similar, though. So that's why I got confused. Right? Really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he gives you the uh, Prelude remix. The Shinra Real Nika. Okay, I missed that dude. Huh. I guess that I guess it's another plane because that was the Gelnica. Now you see, I wish you'd corrected original. yourself on that before I uploaded that part because I titled well, it. Well, I didn't. <laughs> it, it is what it is. <laughs> I titled it based on that joke and everything. Uh, it's, it's 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 fine. I got it wrong. It is what it is. <laughs> oh, Johnny, you're magically better. And then there was this crazy looking house, right? And it was all like trying to kill. Oh I love this bit. no. <laughs> yeah, it took him like a half an hour in order to kill the thing, though. I mean, it was a house. <laughs> mighty, mighty, letting it all hang out. <laughs> I like how they acknowledge how ridiculous that thing is by having Johnny try to tell someone about it. And they're just like, yeah, cool story, bro. <laughs> uh, so why do we need Johnny's help for this anyway? We don't. We, we don't is the thing. He's just tagging along because he's an idiot. <laughs> And he has nothing better to do. He just won't go away, goddammit. I know someone like that at work. Yeah. And now I hope that person never watches this part, although I get the feeling that if they do, they won't know I'm actually talking about them. Yes, we're talking about you, Steve. <laughs> uh, well, process of elimination might help. That's not his name. Okay, so... <laughs> Can you guess who? It's a mystery. All right, so we have the VIP card now, which belongs to the Honey Bee Inn. If it's highly coveted and extremely rare, you're giving us you're giving it to us for running two errands. <laughs> it can't be that valuable. Maybe he doesn't want it anymore. Well, this, as this guy explains, all the shop owners uh, in Wall Market have like a betting pool, and they routinely bet stuff and lose stuff to each other all the time. So this guy figured out pretty much immediately that you're on a quest to get this thing back for its original owner. <laughs> So he's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. You can, he, old guy can have it back, sure. Also, I think a VIP uh, card for the Honeybee Inn might not be something that some people want to have. So, you know. Well, yeah, I know. No, it's like, it's like the Express Pass and like Six Flags or... Disney World. But yeah, you don't have to wait in line in order to go to the in order to go to the brothel now. Great. Yeah, exactly. I got shit to I do. I mean, like, not everyone really even gives a shit about cabaret clubs, so you know, he might just be keeping it around as a novelty or as something to use in his ne- next bet. Wait. 
It's a dress store owner. Oh, I thought. Why are we giving this guy? Okay, never mind. We're giving. Well, we're we're pepping this dude up so that he will make the dress. Well, he he's not going to make the dress for us in this version. This is just a side quest yeah. that we were given. Because we because Cloud has nothing better to do while Aerith gets ready. Yeah, yeah. Because at this point, Cloud doesn't even really. We, we, we don't, we're not even aware that Cloud's going to even need the dress up at this point. Why? Why is it taking like an hour for her to get? Oh wait, never mind. Sorry. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so you really had to ask. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, it's it's a really high quality dress. She's having like some major hair and makeup stuff done. Yeah, I know, but I guess this is just that dress is getting made on the spot because it looks like it's custom tailored for her specifically. Yeah, it's just one of those things where I for, I forgot that women don't just throw clothes on and wear clothes. No, that's what I yeah, do. That's what I do. Effort, efforts for losers. If you're dressing for a formal event like she is, not even men do that. Come on. Oh yeah, but it takes way less time to put on a tux than it does to put on some of the some of the like really fancy kind of dresses. Yeah, but uh, then you need to straighten out your hair in a way that you don't usually do. You need to make sure you're clean shaven like 30 seconds before you leave. Otherwise, five o'clock shadow is happening halfway through the event. Yeah, I think, God forbid, <laughs> actually iron your clothes and realize, oh, I forgot to buy the ironing board for the fifth time this Why year. Why do you need to buy a new ironing board? Because I don't like ironing my clothes on the floor. I mean, but why don't you just have an ironing board? Because I, I don't iron my clothes frequent enough to even consider having one. Again, I just slap whatever shirt I can find in the dryer. Yeah. What if we, like, put iron, like, okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, right? You take your car, right, and you take the tires off your car, and so the mm -hmm. part of the wheels are made of iron, and then you drive over the clothes, and then they're ironed, right? That's too much work. <laughs> I'd rather just get an ironing board. I'd say it'd be easier just to get an ironing board at that point. No, look, we've been over this before. Being lazy requires more effort than not being lazy. Could you use a George <laughs> Foreman grill? <laughs> Could you use a George Foreman grill? Hmm. Yeah, it's a clamp too. It covers both sides at once. Hmm. No, you no a waffle iron. Waffle. I mean, same thing. It could, we could say it's a new style when there's like the <laughs> waffling patterns in our in our pants and whatnot. <laughs> All right, it's time to pump you up. <laughs> so it's time for squats. The squats mini game is fine. I'm fine with the squats mini game. It's basically the same thing it was in the other, just with more visual aids and uh, a few wrinkles yeah. added in to give it a bit more challenge. The pull-ups <laughs> later on with Tifa, those are a nightmare. <laughs> so this is, I'm assuming, the replacement for the questionable scene from the original game, right? Yes. Okay. The As in what? No, because you always, in the original, this is where you got the wig. Um. And in this one, I don't remember what. What is what are, this? Is what are their, we doing this here? Is either either way, this is still the replacement for the big brawny men in the bathhouse. I mean, sh situation. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say replacement because this was in the original game as well, and that didn't act as a replacement. This this doesn't really change a whole lot from the original gym, apart from not yeah. having the wig and not having the vaguely strange dialogue from the the one guy over here. Which I'm halfway certain was only as strange as it was because of the translation, anyway. But um, yeah, <laughs> so well, I don't think anybody will argue that Final Fantasy VII on PS1 was a well-translated game. Well, the thing is, I, I wasn't sure. See, the head of the gym in the original game, I was never sure if it was a guy or a girl, because um, uh, Jules here is is obviously a very feminine-looking one man. soldier squat. And if that's what their intention was, I didn't get that. Well, at all I think the they called him Big Bro in the original translation. No, see, I thought Big Bro was the dude that you were playing squats with because, because <laughs> um, remember when that when that squat game ended in the original game, Big Bro was a sore loser, and the the gym leader smacks him across the room, and the other guy says it, Big Bro's fist is cut to the bone. How did this guy not even know how to do a squat? Well, well, that's the thing. They were saying the words Big Bro a lot. More because in yeah. Japanese they don't use pronouns quite so frequently, and sometimes it's right. it's actually the same way. it's actually more personal in Japanese to s call someone by their name instead of it, using it a was, pronoun. It was uh. also probably it was also probably Aniki, which is more just bro, in the sense that we use it rather than big bro. Yeah, right. you would hear Yakuza call each other Aniki a lot in in that series. Also, I learned from the best of them. Zach taught me the perfect way to do soldier squats. 
Who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not supposed to know that yet. Punches himself in the head. Forgotten. <laughs> stupid, stupid. I like this big cocky asshole trying to do squats against me and falling over every two seconds. Uh, it's a very <laughs> strange, like, techno-y remix of the battle theme for... I, no, it's a, I love that remix. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's weird, though. It's just, like, competitive squatting to battle music. Is it's like, supposed what? to be weird. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke. We all have our training music. So, uh, Jules here is the leader of the gym, and he wanted to teach his, 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 his people here. He wanted to teach them a, a vital life lesson about what quality muscle building means. But it's not fair, Jules. He's on performance enhancing drugs. Just look at his eyes. <laughs> get out of here, Cloud. <laughs> You're on the stuff. I, I kind of, I, I squint my eyes and I, I get a sneak preview of Barrett in the sailor outfit. It's great. <laughs> I can't wait to see that in part two. <laughs> you know they're going to put that in there. Or, you know, it might be part three. Who I want to see what Kate, not Kate Sith, what Red 13 trying to pretend to be a sailor looks like in this, <laughs> in graphics like this. <laughs> Anyway, it'll, it'll be it'll be like the Scooby Doo movie with Scooby on the plane. Uh, well, I mean, they have Scooby Doo dress up as a woman almost every episode, and it's more convincing than Red Thirteen and Final Fantasy Seven. Although the fact that it looked unconvincing is the joke, though. Anyway, the um, uh, after you complete the side quest, you can challenge Jay, and then once you beat Jay, you can challenge Jules. These are the three levels of squatting difficulty, and there's something similar with the pull-ups later on. The top tier reward for both push for both squats and pull-ups is the champion belt uh, accessory, which is one of the best. Which is a yeah, it's one of the best accessories in the game, especially for a physical fighter. Um, yep. So you're going to want to get both of those if you can. Although in my first playthrough, I wound up just sort of giving up on the pull-ups because fuck the pull-ups. <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't mind the pull-ups at all. I, th I thought these were really fun. The, the first two levels of pull-ups are fine, but then you have to be so goddamn precise on the third tier. Yeah, that I will agree. Um, so it. But like once you get a good rhythm, it, it, it plays itself. That's the thing, though. The the, the, the pull-ups reverse directions every so often. Um, so muscle memory starts to become your enemy. You know what? This is because I play Brave Phantom Musashi, and Topo's dancing game is nothing but this. So this is just another reason why you guys should play Brave Phantom Musashi. Meanwhile, the squatting minigame is the same button pattern that it was in the original game, triangle, circle, X, square. The only wrinkle is that if your timing is slightly less than precise, occasionally this thing happens where the X button will get highlighted, and you'll have to mash your way through it. No, I think the original squat minigame was only three buttons, because I'm replaying the, the game in my head right now, and I recall only three movements. Oh, yeah, so you're probably right. It's, it, it, was, yeah. It, was a, it was a quick and easy... Uh, cycle around the face buttons thing either way. Yeah, I think it was square circle X. I don't think triangle was involved at all. Listen, Cloud is too much of a scrawny mofo for me to believe that he can actually do that many squats. Genova cells. Okay, he he, he looks kind of scrawny, but you take one look at his ass and he really works his glutes. <laughs> okay, yeah, but here's the thing, okay? Because he doesn't have as much upper body strength, squats are easier for him. Yeah, he's not so top heavy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah um bit of an unfair advantage in any case we're gonna deal with jules jules who notably has a bit more of a moderate um muscle build than the other guys <laughs> yeah he's certainly leaner so i mean i'm surprised that they took that into account when designing him those gym shorts are skin fucking tight though oh yeah um like i hope he's high i, I hope he applied a lot of gold bond because goddamn, those are yeah, those are probably either leather or latex shorts he's wearing right now, which probably really lower the blood. It, flow. It's it's not going to be leather. Leather isn't super flexible, um, and you really don't want to be wearing leather while you're working out. I'm just going to say that right now, especially when you start sweating. <laughs> this guy looks easier than the last one, from what I've seen. He's not. When you're going at hot, well, he is. He's not. I'm just better used to the to the buttons but basically the the squats speed up as you do more continuous squats so you start going a at a ridiculous speed you can see i'm going so fast that squall that squall cloud is actually freezing up at every step yeah <laughs> so squall does uh quats instead of squats <laughs> he's a, he, he's he, he, he's moving like a like a stop motion sli slideshow of of a squat instructional video <laughs> 
42 soldier squats, 43 soldier squats. Yo, you see, they squats. only did the animatic for this scene, and so they only have the keyframes. They didn't bother to <laughs> animate the rest. Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 4. Then he loses count after he says after I fell, I fell over, like, right at the end at exactly Final 50. Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready, squat, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, two. What? <laughs> no, <laughs> ten. One, two, three, two again, four. Five years later. Brave Exodus. <laughs> Winners don't use drugs. Unless unless it's steroids. In that case, use lots of drugs. <laughs> I guess I don't need this anti-emetics after all. It just tosses it in the trash can. Okay, so. It's not, it's not your fault, Jim Rats. I just happen to be infused with Genova cells. <laughs> <laughs> Champion's Bell, HP by 10% and then strength by 5%. Super good for Cloud. Yes. Yes, indeed. I wish it reflected on his model, though. What, he just, just walks around with a giant, belt. like, yeah. WWE belt? Yeah, like, 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 like an Sunday asshole. Like an the, absolute <laughs> asshole. In the Midgard <laughs> Coliseum. I'm going to take you down, punk. I, I kind of would like to see the armor and stuff reflected on the character's model. Not necessarily the accessories, but the armlets. That Because yeah. we'd be able to see more of the material on their person as well if they did that. But they never actually show that on anyone, so. Yeah, it would have been, been cool. 